Hello again. Okay, take the bag off the face, trying to do the fun part. Taxiing, taxi, taxi, taxi. Move the skin into the right spot before we apply the, um, the rest of the tucking in because it is important. It's one of the most important thing when you're mounting an animal. You gotta make sure that each you know, patch of a skin is being sitting or being glued down to the place that they need to. It is very important. So you can follow the color pattern, the hair pattern, and the feather if you're doing a bird. It, it is very important. Okay, now we got uh, pretty much the face of skin centered around the eyes. And uh, I'll have to keep in mind not to use my uh, uh, headlamp on, on my mount. I mean, I, I see a lot better when I'm working, but unfortunately it creates a big, uh, a big, uh, what do you call it? It's pretty light. It's, it's very bright. I mean, in your eyes, it seems like it doesn't help you see the, the video. There is too much, um, uh, too much light. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's, but anyway, I'm trying to at least uh, compensate it with, uh, with talking. Yeah, the contrast is too high. Okay, I'm using my fish tool to tuck in the uh, tear duct skin. And uh, as you know, that on mule deer is quite deep comparing to whitetail. And uh, that would be my starting point. Uh, this is just how I usually do it. And I'm using my spatula to slowly tuck in the eyelid skin under the clay like at this moment is what I was trying to tell you that most of my uh, not most some of my uh, basically eyelid built up will be again changed and moved around so but at least I have when I have the right amount of clay um, built up underneath the skin it just helps me a lot more when I'm trying to uh, so basically shape up the eyelids with the skin on so that's what I'm trying to say is that don't get hung up too much on building the eye before you tuck in the skin unless you're using epoxy because epoxy is going to set fast and it won't allow you to do much adjustment some some folks I've heard that they use epoxy epoxy sculpt <clears throat> Okay, so we got both eyes fairly tucked in right now. We're gonna be working on the mouth and the nose. And uh, for that, it's quite easier to have the mount upside down on our stand because um, it's just easier to work and I can easily put the positive pressure on, on the skin when I'm tucking it in. Again, apply the extra height paste. Make sure that you have enough height paste in there. I like to use a small roll of clay to the edge of the upper lip. Again, that um, you might have seen me talk about it in my previous videos, but it helps you uh, very good with closing the mouth hair to hair and uh, it avoids creating a, a gap that uh, you might end up with if, if you don't use it. Yeah, just put it on the edge of the lip, on the upper lip, and just feather out the edges. Make sure that it's not uh, creating any step. So basically it would be an extension of the lip, but you're making it out of clay. In some mounts, when there is too much action going on, sometimes we have to cut out the whole lip out of the form and recreate it by clay. That uh, we can we can create the right uh, posture on the on the mouth, or uh, basically, for example, if a fox is um, you know holding on to a dead bird, 
that would be very important for you to create lips, especially the upper lips with clay so you can mold the lip around the prey to make it look natural. Otherwise, it's just going to look stiff. That's what I was trying to say that how important it is to make it with clay. Okay, now we got the nose skin centered by pushing the uh, nostrils skin in and then I'm using my lip tucking tool with the help of my fish tool to tuck in the whole lip. I usually tuck in a little bit right in the front underneath the nose to lock it down in center and then I go to the corners and tuck in the corners and then I work my way in between those two points. When you're tucking in your lip skin, I find it much easier and safer to work when, you, uh, when you're not pushing down on your tool straight into the gap. Work it with a, uh, basically a, a motion like you're, you're rolling it in instead of pushing it straight in. That helps a lot better. Uh, it works out very good. Because sometimes if you put uh, too much pressure on the uh, on your tool to push in the lip skin, you might cut through it and you won't like it. So I find it that uh, that's why I like my fish tool again. Let's advertise for it more because it has teeth and edges and um, it's not sharp and it really grabs onto the skin and when you push it in and uh, it'll it'll really tuck it in. Once everything is all tucked in, at least to a fair amount, then in the corners, if you want to put some pressure, it's okay. You can, you can push the skin in with a little bit more pressure. Just to make sure that the hair is uh, not tucked in too much. Okay, right side up again. You see my owls? I love my owls. There are extra hands in the shop. They keep the skin right where I want them. Otherwise, they're just going to be floppy all around when I turn the mount upside down. So, <clears throat> pull out the nostril skin. Make sure that they're all out. And then you tuck them back in slowly with, uh, with care and basically marking them down exactly so you're doing a symmetric job and push the extra glue all the way down to the face and toward down side of the neck if you have lots of extra glue so you can squeeze them out of the end of the or the back of the mount use your tool to tuck in all the skin in uh, around the nostrils lay them flat inside the nostril and then with a um, plastic bag you can push in if you need if, you, if your skin inside the nostril is too short you might need to pin them but if not you can just use plastic bag to jam it inside there and if you have enough glue the uh, the skin will really well glue to the walls of the nose of the nostrils inside the nose and you will be set when you pull the bag, uh, plastic bag out uh, or the plastic sheet out of the nose then everything is glued and all I have to do just the finishing work. So right now I'm adjusting the ear placement again one more time. One more time again don't forget to pull the ears up till it almost touching the antlers. There is almost no space between the antlers and the ears. Yeah, the mount is almost getting to the step that is having, it's taking some shape actually, looks like a deer a little bit.
So what I'm basically trying to do right now, um, I should have actually zoomed in more, but um, apparently I forgot. So I'm trying to give the eyes the proper shape, especially the eyelids from the front corner and the back, and also making sure that the eye is clean with some Q-tips and whatnot. But my my thin flat spatula is a great tool for now to to keep adjusting and tucking in the skin um, underneath the clay, like the um, eyelid, uh, clay eyelids, and make sure that uh, at least it looks very symmetric by the end of the day before I leave it for tomorrow. And also the tear ducts, I'm still going to tuck in a little bit more before I push down that uh, little piece of clay that we put on the tear ducts and close the tear ducts. So I grab my um, sharp tool to adjust the skin around the burrs of the antler. That's where you need to either um, glue it down which is going to be pretty hard to glue something into the um, to mache but what I have is I have enough uh, height paste underneath it so I usually use my shortest um, brad nail and I bra brad nail it down around the antler do some more tweaking around the nose make sure that the holes are all nice and symmetric Now time to jam in the plastic bag. Grocery bags are awesome for that. The reason we're using plastic is that uh, plastic tends to unravel. So it pushes everything, all the skin against the nostrils. And that's what we want. I have used paper towel or cotton before, they shrink, they, they absorb the water and they shrink and they get sticky inside the nose so it's not as clean and as nice as, as, nice as plastic, I like plastic more. Yeah, so we, we push a lot of plastic bag into each nostrils. And we'll just leave it like that till the mount really cures and sets. For those of you who are not familiar with the term wall pedestal, um, a long time ago they decided to the 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 uh, the taxidermy suppliers decided to create something that was called instead of a deer shoulder mount hanging on the wall they brought it down onto a pedestal which was basically through a pivot or a bolt down to a rock or some sort of a scenery which was quite attractive to a lot of hunters and then they decided to create the same uh, basically anatomy of a pedestal deer but to be able to hang it on the wall because not everybody wanted to have them on the floor or a tabletop and then they created a flat spot on the back of the animal that basically gives you that look of the floor pedestal mount but also allows you to hang it on the wall because it has a flat space behind it the pedestal mounts they show more of the shoulder a little bit more at top of the legs some some of them show more some of them show less but they're in general they're more attractive looking mount comparing to the traditional wall hanging mount these wall pedestals they have their own place too anyway so we're doing more taxing around making sure that the hair on the, on the back of the neck is also stacking up properly
water spray and dog brush or pet brush is uh, is my preferred tool at this stage of the game I like to brush 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 with a little bit of uh, moist on it and then uh, let it to drip dry <clears throat> more adjustment more brushing when you have them upside down it gives you a totally different view from especially when you stand back about like I don't know five six feet you can see the color pattern going into the brisket and if it's not uh, symmetric you can easily adjust it okay guys this is the end of this video as well hope you liked it and if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel make sure you stick around I have uh, a bunch of good pictures of this mount when it's all done and finished so you can enjoy watching them okay thank you very much again for watching the channel and we will see you again before the end of this week hopefully with another video on to the next one thank you bye, -bye.